Welcome back, everyone, to the Night Network's coverage of the US presidential election. I'm joined by former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd, Tom Switzer from Sydney University, the US uh, Centre of Studies there, and, of course, my colleague here at Nine, Deb Knight. Nice to have your company. We are certainly well and truly underway. Very shortly, we're going to go back to uh, ABC America for to join them for a uh, get a taste and see how things are progressing. Indeed, Diane Sawyer is hosting, so we might go to her right now. Three more projected winners to give you right now. From Georgia, we are ready to project based on exit polls that Governor Romney has won in Georgia, which has voted Republican six times in the last seven elections. Alabama, down in the South again, Governor Romney has once again become the projected winner. And in New Jersey, President Obama is the projected winner tonight. It was devastated, as you know, by that superstorm Sandy, and we're still awaiting word. How many people in the storm zone could actually show up? But we are ready to project that the winner tonight in New Jersey is President Obama, George. That's right. So we still see the North is going to President Obama. The South is going to Governor Romney. So far, just about everything as expected right now. You see the states filled in that have been called already. But we are going to be keeping our eye all night long on these big battlegrounds where the campaigns have invested so much time and energy and money. The big states that are going to tip the balance tonight. The vote continues to come in. And I want to go to Ohio right now. You see it on the map right now. If we can zone in here on the board, we see about 20 percent of the vote has now come in Ohio. President Obama Obama has 59% of that so far, Governor Romney 40, and John Carl, I want to go to you because so much of that lead is based on the early vote that was made before today. Yeah, that's exactly right. And remember I, I said it, this time exactly four years ago, uh, Obama had a 33-point lead over John McCain. That lead is not as big this time around. In Ohio, what we know is the early vote was even more than it was four years ago. They don't break it down by party, so we don't know exactly who voted. But the president has not built up the kind of lead that he had four years ago in the early vote. Still ahead, but not as much as he had four years ago. Meanwhile, down <laughs> south in Florida, one of the biggest prizes on the board tonight, 29 electoral votes in Florida. We all remember what happened in 2000. Let's see what's happening right now. You see right there, 56% of the vote has been reported so far, and it is close, 51% for President Obama, 48 percent for Governor Romney. But Nicole Wallace, who of course worked for the McCain-Palin campaign four years ago, I know you've been talking to the Romney campaign. They look at these numbers and they're not discouraged. That's right. They say there are still two-hour lines to vote in GOP counties. They say that they're feeling... Sorry, we got breaking news. We do have breaking <laughs> news. I love that everyone knows to stop and we're filling in the South here because we have another projection to make based on exit polling. It is in Tennessee. Governor Romney, our projected winner, it is again a very red state coming in for Governor Romney. Nicole, you followed that chime well, but go back to the point you were making. I'm easily trained. <laughs> uh, uh, so they, they still feel good. They feel good about that I-4 corridor. That's what we always talk about. They say in the raw votes, and I, I know from John Carl that they're not to be trusted, but they are an early indicator, a canary in the mine, if you will, and they're ahead in some of those raw votes in those counties that they must win. They also feel good. You know, we talk about Ohio, but if Mitt Romney doesn't win Virginia and Florida, there won't be anything to talk about in Ohio. It won't matter, actually if he wins Ohio, if he loses either Virginia or Florida. So they're watching those, those same counties in Virginia and they're, they feel good about Northern Virginia. They feel like the margin hasn't gotten away from them and they feel good about the rest of the state. Donna Brazil, you spent several months, I think, in Florida for Al Gore back in 2000. What are you seeing in the returns so far? Well, when you, when you say Florida and close, I get a little nervous. But uh, <laughs> <I swear. laughs> uh, what I'm looking at really right now is that in the southern part of the state, the, the Democratic uh, stronghold in Broward, Dade County, uh, Democrats are performing very well. We're doing good in the so-called I-4 cor corridor. I'm looking at Duval, Jacksonville. If we can maintain the numbers that we have right now uh, in that part of the state, I think it's going to be a narrow victory, but it's going to be very, very close, and I think President Obama can still uh, keep uh, Florida in his And power. if President Obama wins Florida, he wins the night. That is a Absolutely. key to 270. He doesn't need it, but if he wins it, he's almost guaranteed it. Let's go to Virginia right yes, now. That's the other state I want to take a look at right now. 26% of the vote has come in so far. Governor Romney opened up a fairly big lead right there, 57 to 42. Now I want to dig down a little bit farther there and see where the vote is coming in. You still see that in the state of Virginia and Cokie, let me bring 
this into you. You still see that Governor Romney has a lot of strength now in the southwest part of the state, but you also see, and maybe this is a bit of a surprise, you look up north in the northeast part of the state and you see a lot of red up there in northern Virginia. That's where President Obama has to be strong. That is very surprising uh, and something that the, the president's team has to be very concerned about because Virginia, uh, as, as, you, as Nicole just said, uh, if Ohio doesn't matter uh, if, unless Romney carries Virginia. And uh, if, he is, if he's doing well in the northern part of the state, then uh, that means that he could, he could win Virginia. And that, that's a very big win for him. And that's surprising because in yeah. all this demography we've been yeah. talking about all night, this is a part of the state where it's high tech and uh, very educated. There are a lot of women, and there are a lot of you women know, who are concerned about, uh, about social issues. It, it really goes to the question, Diane, you asked before. I mean, you have President Obama here trying to straddle not one but two tight ropes. He's mobilizing very different coalitions in Sunbelt states like Virginia and Florida, where he's relying on this new Democratic coalition of a growing minority population and these upscale whites. And then in the Midwest, where that where those voters aren't as prevalent, he is really trying to reassemble the old Democratic coalition, <laughs> the New Deal coalition, centered on working class whites. And so you have two different, uh, two different kind of paths that he is trying to piece together uh, to get to 270. That's right, Martin and there North is county to watch in Virginia. Watch yes. Loudoun County up north, mm -hmm. right. uh, a Bellwether County, and right now Romney holding a slight lead even in Loudoun County. Slightly even Slightly in early returns. So a, a true swing counting. Yes. And and these are young folk too. This is not this is not you know a bunch of people worried about uh, young right. people taking their Medicare checks away from them. These are the young people. Okay, we're going <laughs> to keep track of this, but let's go back to Josh Allen. He's down in Times Square. And again, so many people have been gathering there. We remember the thousands from four years ago. Josh. We are certainly on our way there tonight, Diane. The crowd's really starting to swell out here. Again, as numbers continue to pour in, and we, we've been talking about Florida, what a uh, key win it would be for either campaign. And we have with us now some voters who really represent a microcosm, I think, of the state and the myriad issues faced there. Joining me now uh, first is Beth from Vero Beach, Florida. A and Beth, again, uh, there were so many reasons to have voted for either one or the other. Who did you vote for and why? I voted for Romney. Um, I'm a Christian and I am pro-life and I like his stand against abortion. So a social issue perhaps carrying your vote. I also want to ask, our experts have been saying that in a lot of ways, married white women may be the key, the key demographic that could swing this one way or another. In the state of Florida, especially in these last months of the campaigns as they begin to bombard with ads, how coveted did you feel? Oh, uh, you know, I don't know if I felt coveted or not. I just, I know that I need to vote the way I feel strongly. Also, as a business owner, I feel like the economy is where I need to be, uh, where Romney is also, this has the same feeling. So I just feel like that's what I needed to do. We really thank you for standing out here. I know it, it's, I want to bring you now in, Anderson. And Anderson, uh, I know you voted for President Obama. Yes, I did. And in fact, it, it's something, uh, it was something of an epithet that the Mitt Romney campaign used for over, over years now uh, in attacking uh, Obama. It was Obamacare. But in fact, that was the reason that he got your vote. Yeah, uh, I have private insurance, but I had an aunt who passed three years ago on Thanksgiving Day, and she struggled with breast cancer. And at that point, she didn't have medical insurance. And at that point, she did. So I have an emotional connection to those who are out there searching for that help they need, whether it's government assistance or just somebody being kind enough to help them actually pay for private insurance and Obamacare. It's pretty much debt from the government. So I love it. We're seeing the numbers come in, and it's a very, it's a neck and neck race. Did you have a sense of that between with your family and your friends as you were casting your vote and heading to tonight? Did you have a sense of how close it would be in your state? Uh, I got a feeling it's going to be a good one. Uh, it's going to be like a national championship game, but it's going to be politics, not football this time. <laughs> All right, again, there's so many stories to be told, and we've just begun down here in Times Square. Back upstairs now to you, George and, and Diane. like a national football game, it's 37 degrees out there where you are, Josh. So thanks to everybody. But check, let's check in on Florida. A little Show more vote is coming in right now. It's now up to 57% in. President Obama still holding on to that three points, 51 to 48. And I love precision tweeting, precision social media. Let's go back over to our headquarters and Katie Kurtz. Well, Diana, George, I think turnout is anecdotally appears 
appears to be high in the state of Florida. If the long lines are any indication, we're getting some photos from voters like this one. Anthony posting long voting lines in Cape Coral saying it's a three hour wait. And I should point out, as you guys know, that the population of Florida, almost a quarter Hispanic and about 66 of all Hispanic voters favor President Obama. And Coco in Florida also tweeting me just recently, Obama supports fair immigration policy and embraces Hispanic diversity, E.J. Sotomayor, the first Hispanic Supreme Court justice. But having said that, the overall sentiment for the candidates seems very easy, evenly split, dead even over the last seven days with 50% positive, 50% negative for both President Obama and Governor Romney. Right down the middle. Okay, Katie Couric, thanks very much. Of course, the White House, the big story. Okay, we'll leave the uh, American ABC coverage there for the moment. Katie Couric, George Stephanopoulos and uh, Diane Sawyer there. <laughs> Kevin Rudd, you, uh, we all said that's a worry when we were talking about Virginia and you've just got some information through from a friend of yours on the ground over there. Yeah, just in uh, the northern parts of Virginia, which you saw in the ABC coverage a minute ago, where I think one of the US commentators said that um, there's a few too many red shadings in the northern part of the state. Um, there's a little bit of concern with folks I've spoken to on the Democratic side on the ground there as to where that will go. Um, but on the other hand, there's a huge number of people who still haven't cast a ballot. And a report I've just seen in is that they, uh, the local um, authorities in Virginia have ceased public reporting of polling results in Virginia because there's so many people still to vote. So question mark in terms of which way Virginia is going. But as the, uh, my other conversation with Democrats in the United States suggests that they're pretty happy about Florida. Um, the president's ahead, not hugely, but he's ahead. And most critically, they've retained a Senate race there against a Republican challenger and the uh, Republicans threw some 75 to $100 million of that campaign. So if we've held up uh, in terms of the Democratic side in, uh, in Florida, uh, then um, uh, through the Senate race, that tends to reflect that the president's going okay as well. Yeah, the important point to bear in mind here is that both Virginia and Florida are states that Mitt Romney must win if he has any chance of moving west to secure those 270 electoral college votes. So it's not a big loss for the president if he loses Virginia. It is an interesting indicator, though, that northern part of Virginia, mm. which is just down south of Washington, D.C., it's more small, liberal, progressive, moderate voters. They clearly look like they're swinging in favour of Mitt Romney. But as I say, that's what Mitt Romney had hoped for. It'd be a real concern for the Republicans if they weren't looking good in Virginia. And interesting following up on the lines of voters as well, coming through on, on Twitter, <coughs> apparently the Obama camp has been tweeting and, t tweeting and texting to make sure that all voters in those lines get a chance to vote and to ensure that they don't actually leave those long queues, saying that every vote is crucial, every vote counts. OK, we'll be back soon with Nine's coverage of the US presidential election. Stay with us.